Now suppose we're asked to find the range of a function, and we're not given a graph of it. This can be a lot more difficult than we're used to seeing, and so because without the graph, you can't see it, and it's really hard to look at the pieces and find out what they are. But the good news is that if we have a function, the range of that function is equal to the domain of its inverse. So we can take advantage of this by first finding the inverse, and then using the inverse to find the, new, the domain of the original, or the range of the original. So let's suppose that we have a function f of x equals x plus 1 over x plus 2. And we're told to find the range. Well, the domain is easy. I'm just going to start here and domain. And we're going to start with the domain because that's easy. x plus 2 can't be equal to 0. So that means that this is the set of all x such that x does not equal negative 2 because negative 2 would make that 0. Well, now to find the inverse or we first replace this with y. y equals x plus 1 over x plus 2. Swap our variables. Multiply both sides by y plus 2. Distribute, that gives me xy plus 2 equals y plus 1. Let's subtract a y from both sides. Oops, there's an x on him too and a 2x. So we get xy minus y equals 1 minus 2x. Factor a y out, that's x minus 1, equals 1 minus 2x. And my y equals 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. So my domain here of my inverse is that x can't be so this is the domain, and we're going to get a range. The domain here is the set of all values x, such that x cannot equal 1. Well, the range of the inverse, we just take this piece and we change the x to a y, so the y can, is all values except negative 2. And when we go this way, we change our y, and it can't equal positive 1. So that's the range is the same as the domain of my inverse. So once I find my inverse, it becomes a lot easier to find my range by finding its domain.